Eights are back, racing in the Godolphin Mile and Black Cat, Black Kitten and Don Renato near the inside, both slow to go. America's Barcolo came out quickly. Straight after being headed, hits the lead again. 50 metres left to go. Diamond That's Stripes Edgar in front. Edgar Prado's winning. And Diamond Stripes wins. Diamond Stripes first. Elusive warning second. Now... His first ride in Adel Shiba, he gets a win. Edgar Prado's such a great guy. All he went through with Barbro and everything, it's so cool to see him win a race like this in his first try. The atmosphere is unbelievable. The kind of the whole colour of the of the night is so fantastic. The kind of combination of the wonderful Arab gentlemen in their fantastic white outfits and their headdresses, next to the best of European dress and the best of American style, it, it brings everything together. It's a cosmopolitan melting pot. This is the International Village, which is the place to be. We are being told this is our first walk in here. What does it take to get ready for something like this? Half an hour. Half an hour. Half an hour yeah for all of this where are you from sir South Africa South Africa you remind me a bit of the mask Jim Carrey of biscuits we're in Dubai in the International Village but they have a Dunkin Donuts ladies how are we doing tonight we are very happy to be here where are you from Germany is this your first time in Dubai no it's the third time <laughs> how are you ladies doing we're great is this your first time at the World Cup it is yes what do you think of it so far Fantastic. Where are you ladies from? Australia. There seems to be a lot of Australians out here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Are you rooting for uh, Nick and Nero? That's the only Aussie horse here. Really? Yeah, okay, yeah, we are. There are certain things we are told that we should experience in life. For those who live in the world of horse racing, one of them is World Cup night at Nad Al Shiva. ceremony is concerned, there are really no words that can do it justice. A length delay is literated, three quarters to Lord Admiral. JPEG and Dargina, JPEG the outside, JPEG, JPEG foot back to meet Dargina. 250 metres to go from Yung Zane, the pride of Hong Kong, Dr. Nina. As soon as Dubai World Cup comes closer, you see all these big international horses and, and you realize that you, you are not boxing in the same category. All week, the attention was on America's super horse. Steve Asmussen, Curly, the big horse. And I was allowed to be basically right next to him in the pre-paddock and be a part of the calm before the World Cup storm that Curlin was about to unleash. You can see his size, his musculature. He's the Arnold Schwarzenegger of, of horses. <laughs> and, and yet he has, has this huge stamina and desire and speed uh, and, and durability and distance. So that's why we fell in love with him when we first saw him. Putting this all into perspective, what is it like to be the headline of the entire week here at Dubai World Cup? Well, it's an outstanding feeling, but Curlin is deserved of that and off his previous races, and hopefully this is uh, uh, another one of the major goals that we have in mind for him. Curlin goes in and premium tap. Last year's runner-up will be the last to come along. And they look ready. Racing in the Dubai World Cup. 550 metres away and Robbie Alvarado asks Curlin to go. He moves up on the outside of Asiatic Boy. Well armed on the rail, but Curlin takes the lead. Once they hit the long Nad Al Shiba stretch, it took very little for Curlin to just draw off on his international competitors. And there was no doubt 
who ruled the racing world that night. Curly. And Everybody celebrated and received their trophies of gold and jewels. Curlin's reward was much simpler. As impressive as Nad Al Sheba is, the future of racing in Dubai goes beyond what I think anyone has ever imagined in horse racing. I continue to say unbelievable, but we're standing right now in, in the middle of what will be Maidan, the pinnacle of international racing. The centerpiece of Maidan is without doubt the racetrack, but it goes well beyond horse racing. Maidan is a city and a center of commerce that will come without precedent in the modern world. It's gonna be one kilometer long from, from end to end. It's just incredible. One year ago, none of this was here. And over the course of the next two years, it will become what they have planned for Maidan. It's nonstop, the workforce, 4,500 people right now working as we stand here. And they're gonna increase that workforce up to 7,500 people. We see it on paper. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like in person. I think it's going to be the premier race course in the world, not just as for the, the racing industry, but it's a similar lifestyle, it will have unique features, and I think it's going to be an attraction throughout the year. I think the thing that we wanted to do, first of all, is, is to look at the grandstand and look at the flow of the horses, the flow of the owners, the trainers, the jockeys, the media, the public, the VIPs. I've taken the architects around the world and we continue to review and change and look to make sure that we've crossed the T's and dot the I's. Approximately 80,000 fans will be able to witness the carnival of racing over the 76 million square feet the track will occupy. Whether it's an unobstructed view from one of the 270 hotel suites or a seat at one of the 10 restaurants, you can even ride up in style in your yacht via the Maidan Canal. Fans will be able to enjoy the visual splendor of Maidan City. Shopping, golf, parks, residential developments, and office space will all be encompassed in Maidan City. And this will all be showcased at the 2010 Dubai World Cup. Maidan's World Cup. I believe it's not just going to be for Dubai, it's for the whole world. This is for the horse goers. Sports owners, trainers, jockeys, who are associated with this industry, plus the spectators. Plus, I think it's going to be a, a landmark, in my opinion, for, for the nation. Now it's time for our Racing Across the Nation part of the program. And with the Kentucky Derby drawing ever so close, we're going to give you a chance to play catch up with who the hot horses are in the run for the roses. First up, we take it to Aqueduct Racetrack in New York for the $750,000 Grade 1 Gotham Stakes. In this race, there's only one horse to watch. It's quite a performance. It's the number two horse. I want revenge. He gets left at the gate, has tons of trouble through the stretch, and he gets up there. This is a horse to watch in the Derby. And they're off in the Wood Memorial. Oh, I want revenge. Heavily favored, broke last of the field. He was absolutely flat-footed at the break, and he is left at the back of the pack. Interesting start to the Wood Memorial, and Lord Justice takes the field round the first turn. Atomic Rain is second. Imperial Council much closer to the pace today. Third on the outside, just a coincidence, is now fourth. West Side Bernie runs in fifth. At the inside, long shot Cellar Dweller in sixth position. And then it's Lime Ricky, and last of them all, Joe Talamau is relatively unhurried with I Want Revenge. 
after that disastrous beginning. It was a 24 and 2 opening quarter mile here as Lord Justice leads the field down the backstretch run. Edgar Prado's got Imperial Council right up there on his heels in second, behind a moderate half mile of 48 seconds. Atomic Rain is third toward the inside, just a coincidence is fourth. I Want Revenge now is commencing a bid. He's just outside the half mile pole, and he's five lengths from the leader, and the leader is still Lord Justice. Imperial Council, just a little nudge there. Still a length behind, Lord Justice still holding him off. On the inside, Atomic Rain, right there, running in third. On the outside, just a coincidence. I Want Revenge is only three lengths from the lead, but he's in behind a wall of horses as the field turns for home in the Wood Memorial. Top of the stretch, Lord Justice, Imperial Council, just a coincidence. Can I Want Revenge get running room? He's in tight. He's found a narrow seam, and he is coming indeed. I Want Revenge comes on through to take the lead. West Side Bernie, second on the outside. A remarkable victory for I Want Revenge today, coming from last place. This horse ran like a horse who's run 150 races, because you can't act better in terms of the adversity and overcoming it than I Want Revenge here. He did not panic, the jock didn't panic either. He was able to relax, switch off, get into his rhythm, and even though he got shut off, at the eighth pole, he was able to find room, accelerate. He only ran about a sixteenth of a mile. This was an amazing performance, and he wins by about two in the end, and it could have been 15. Now we take you to Santa Anita, the home of the Santa Anita Derby. It's a grade one. It's worth $750,000. Hoss you want to watch is the Bob Baffert train, pioneer of the Nile. If he gets victorious in this race, you could see him listed as one of the probable favorites in the run for the Roses. And away they go, and Pioneer of the Nile hopped away nicely, but it's Feisty Sue Answers who wants the lead, and Feisty Sue Answers goes on to lead them. Take the points coming through to race in second, unbridled Roman at the rail. Pioneer of the Nile has taken a strong hold in the fourth position. Gallant Sun is on the outside, Chocolate Candy's taken back second last, and Mr. Hot Stuff is last, but no more than five lengths would cover them all. They run past the seven eights and Feisty Sue answers, hugs the rail and ensures a good pace in the derby. Leads it by just over a length to the gray, take the points in second. Unbridled Roman pulling pretty hard down at the rail. Pioneer of the Nile is right there in fourth. No more than two lengths off the leaders and Pioneer of the Nile now pulling away at Garrett Gomez and Pioneer of the Nile's taken hold of the bit and he's taking off with him now as he goes to the front as they go past the five eights. Then we drop back to unbridled Roman who's lost a bit of ground. Chocolate candy is now five off them and Mr. Hot Stuff is last. They run past the half mile pole in the derby now on the inside. Feisty Sue answers right up alongside us. Pioneer of the Nile. No breathers out here. These two going at it as they go into the far turn. Take the points is right there third then unbridled Roman. We come back to Gallant Sun who's the first one under a ride. Mr. Hot Stuff has six lengths to make up and Chocolate Candy last, but they're taking closer order as they come to the top of the lane. Still the long shot, Feisty Sue answers. Pioneer of the Nile is right there. Chocolate Candy on the outside. Take the points behind that. Gallant Sun in with a shot. Homeward bound in the derby. Pioneer of the Nile gets the lead. Going to be tackled now by Chocolate Candy down the centre. But Pioneer of the Nile goes on. Chocolate Candy chasing Gately from second. Now, after that victory, pioneer of the now, Bob Beth became the all-time lead in train with victories when it comes to the Santa Anita Derby. He has now won five. Now, that's it for this edition of the Sport of the Kings, but once again, on behalf of everyone here, we would like to say thanks for allowing us to spend this last half hour with you on this Saturday morning. First thing and only to leave you with is that we want to thank our friends south of the border, HRTV, for allowing us the footage to take you to Dubai. Remember to keep it straight. Oh, you know what? We will get you on that final turn, and we do hope you enjoyed today's show.